Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender 2.8 tutorial, our uh, training series and uh, we're going to be doing something different today. I'm going to go over the different time lapses that I've uploaded in the previous days and talk about how I did the different things that I did there. Uh, so yeah, today we're going to be looking at uh, this video here uh, where I made uh, this uh, chair. Uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, how I did uh, the details there and um, okay, I think an ad is about to play here so yeah. Let's just go to the project files here. I'll change uh, my render engine to EV. I uh, just to show you the details out of there. Let's wait for the shader to compile here. Uh, so yeah, this is the chair. Uh, it's a bit dark for some reason. So let me see Sigma. I think I need to brighten this a bit. Yes, so this is the chair. Let me turn off the ambient occlusion and the screen space reflection so that and I think the lights are slowing down uh, the render here. So let me see if I can find where are my lights. Hmm. Let's see, lights, 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 extras. So this is the seat I did, and uh, you can see it's a bit well, it's uh, well detailed. And uh, what I'm going to be showing you is how I did uh, these uh, pins that that go around the chair. Uh, you can watch the entire time lapse if you want to see how I did the entire sofa. But I think this is the most difficult part here, uh, getting these uh, pins to follow uh, the curvature of the seat. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's. Let me show you how I did that. So I'll just open up a project here. I'm not going to model the entire thing again. Uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, create something simple here. Maybe let's uh, get this cube. I'll change uh, this to random and turn on cavity so that you can easily see uh, the shape. Let me add a loop here, control R. I'm um, sorry my screen my screen keys are not showing. I haven't installed uh, the plugin yet. So let me also add another loop around there using the shortcut control R and another loop here. I just want to make a simple chair. I will delete this this loop and I can select this and this hit F to turn them into a face, connect them, select this, this here. And this here, then I can add a loop in the middle here and go to the side view so that I can push this vertex to a line. Uh, you can zoom in really tight uh, so that you can make sure that uh, to make sure that this is aligned to that point. like that and now you can see we have that so then you can add on uh, the subdivision surface modifier uh, let's increase uh, this to about to uh, turn on smooth shading and uh, maybe we can add let's see round off these corners uh, what I can do is just get this connected like this and this like that uh, the purpose of this story is not to show you how to move a chair, but uh, I need to have something to work with here, so that's why I'm going, going and making this. So uh, I'm using the shortcut J to join uh, the two vertices, and uh, holding down holding down Alt and then uh, left clicking an edge loop, uh, double left clicking on an edge loop to select uh, that entire edge loop, and then Control X <coughs> to delete. Uh, that edge loop. So let me add a supporting loop around here and uh, maybe select these loops here. Ctrl B uh, to bevel them and uh, use your middle mouse wheel to give them a nice resolution, smooth. Re uh, smooth. And uh, for this bottom part, I can add another loop, supporting loop there and a supporting loop around uh, there. I can select also these two. Ctrl B, yes. 
I just want to have something nice, nice uh, to work with. So another thing you will see is that uh, because we have this end gun here, uh, we are getting some kind of pinching. Let me see if I can show it to you here. Uh, you can see we have that kind of pinching going on uh, that is uh, brought by uh, the subdivision surface. Uh, so what I usually like doing to, re to get rid of that is that uh, if you select uh, this inside uh, section here and insert it like that so that there is a loop uh, going around uh, that area. When you turn on the subsurf, you'll see that uh, we don't have that pinching anymore around the edges. Uh, you still have it there on the end gun, and this end gun, but it's not as prominent as it was before. Uh, you can also, we still have it here, so we can also do the same uh, for this side here. So whenever you see uh, some funny shading going on, you can always try doing something like this. Uh, just select uh, that entire section. You must have seen me do this a lot in uh, uh, the time lapses. So, so to get rid of this pinching here uh, that you see there, and I'll just. So I think you can also just select even the bottom part so that uh, you insert it in a better way. So let's see how this will look. And if I insert this. You can see how it has done that and uh, now you can see it's a much better looking sofa than uh, before and uh, same we could do uh, for this inside here insert it like that and uh, it should look improve how this looks uh, but uh, you can see we have this issue going on here uh, because uh, there is some pinching here and uh, so you can just add uh, two edge loops here. So add a first loop and then bevel that to make it two loops. And uh, when they touch like that, you can always select everything. Uh, go to vertex mode uh, by selecting this or hitting one on your keyboard and then merge by distance. Uh, that should get rid of any uh, double vertices. Uh, but I think we still have a few here because uh, they they were above the threshold. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just right click again, uh, merge by distance and then increase the merge distance uh, so that I can merge others as well. And uh, that should reduce that pinching. And uh, if we, we turn on the uh, shade smooth, I can see that uh, we have a better sofa. So now I also want to add in a seam around uh, this area where these pins are going to go. So what I'm, what I can do is uh, uh, maybe let me see what I can do. I can I can add a loop here, Control R, and you can see how it goes around the entire sofa. Uh, Shift, maybe you can push this up around there, and then add another loop inside there, and uh, use Alt S to push it along its normal. Uh, that should create a seam around that. So now you can see we have something uh, of this sort. Yeah. And uh, in the same way I did, that's the same way I did uh, these inside uh, seams or impressions that you see there. Uh, so if you wanted those as well, you can just uh, select uh, these rings here. Like uh, that then control B all right but you see we have only two uh, edge loops here so you can use your middle mouse wheel to add another edge loop in the middle uh, make sure that uh, the distance between them the bevel distance is not too large so around there and that uh, now I want to select uh, this inside bevel you can unselect everything and then go in and select one by one uh, but I think that's a uh, inefficient and uh, time wasting so you can just do control b and then control minus on your keyboard uh, to deselect everything else but uh, the middle uh, that says uh, like that and then you can use alt s to push them along their normal but uh, you have to be careful 
in some areas, as you see that uh, the bevel will start uh, shrinking in, into itself. So don't uh, push it too much, so around there. And uh, now if we turn on the subdivisions, you can see we have something like that. And uh, if you want this to be more, to come out a little bit more, uh, you can also just select uh, these uh, faces. I'm using shift to select this face and then control to select uh, the, the other section. So then you can push these out a bit using Alt S like that. It's not uh, the best looking so forth, but uh, let's go with that. So now to add uh, that uh, pin ring around uh, this edge, uh, what you what you do is, uh, let me first turn off this subdivision. You can select that inside loop using Alt and then left clicking on this uh, to get that loop. And then Shift D, uh, you can see this is what we have. Don't move it anywhere, just uh, right click uh, to undo that move and then hit P to separate uh, the selection. So now if I select the sofa and hide this, you can see I still have that ring uh, intact. Uh, then what I can do, what I need to do now is just convert this into a curve uh, that we will use uh, in the array system uh, as the modifier for the object, that for the pins are to follow around. Uh, so now you can see if we go to edit mode, you can see we have uh, the curve uh, there and ready. Uh, now what we need to do is model the pins we want to use. Uh, so if you're going to add as many pins as I had in um, on that server, make sure you use a something uh, with a very little resolution otherwise you're going to have uh, the pc is going to be your project is going to be too heavy for this so let's see let me try something like 10 scale it down I scale it down uh, hit f to fill it in and uh, then extrude up you can scale it in as well control b to bevel that to round it off a bit i uh, can increase the resolution using your middle mouse wheel and i uh, can see it's a bit faceted uh, so we can just uh, give it a, a small shape and uh, we don't need to see this bottom face it will just add uh, to our polygon count uh, so let's uh, just relate that as well uh, also make sure that uh, uh, the pivot point is at the Uh, sorry, uh, so so I make sure the pivot point is at the bottom, and uh, if it's not, I just select uh, that uh, bottom loop and uh, sh hit Shift S, then select cursor to select it to push it. Uh, so if it's like here, select uh, that uh, bottom loop, and then Shift S cursor to select it, uh, to move to shift uh, that cursor uh, to that position and then right click origin uh, to 3D cursor that will shift uh, the origin to the 3D cursor position. So now to push this here, all you need to do is uh, move, add an array and uh, under fit type, change it to uh, curve length and select uh, the curve. I will see that uh, and then to cut, make it follow that curve, just select just add another modifier, the curve modifier, and then select uh, that curve. You can see right now it's kind of weird. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, make sure that uh, the object position is the same as uh, the curve position. So select uh, the curve, shift S, cursor to select it, to move the cursor there, and then select the object, shift S, selection to cursor. And you can see now we are getting a better uh, deformation. You can see that uh, though we set uh, the array count to uh, fit to fit the curve the length of the curve uh, this doesn't fit uh, the curve length so what you need to do is uh, make sure that you apply scale and rotation uh, to make sure that uh, blender has the right scale for these objects so first let's apply the scale of this uh, curve you can see it has affected 
uh, the object and then let's also scale apply the scale of this object as well and you can see we have that uh, right now the pins are a bit too big so let's scale them down I think to something like that but uh, you, you will notice that uh, whenever you scale something down it will also uh, won't fit, it won't fit uh, the curve anymore so you need to apply the scale again and you can see how uh, we have that so I think we need to play around with the rotation of this uh, so let's try applying scale and rotation and uh, also scale and rotation for this you can see there is a weird uh, there's a weird um, how is it called deformation uh, or stretching to this so you can select the curve and go to the curve settings and uh, play around with the twist here you see how these are rotating so let me unhide our seat you can see that uh, uh, we are they are facing in a wrong direction so to correct that uh, direction let's just select the curve and then change uh, the twist angle to how those uh, face you uh, let me see so if they are too much inside of the curves you can just try to move uh, the curve around in different axes uh, in different axes to see uh, the right axis you have to move it uh, through so so let me see what's going on with this stretching it could be yeah so I think uh, the, the mesh itself is is it let's, let me see You can then try scaling it in that direction if it's kind of stretching. So I think this will stretch in, uh, let me see, scale in Y. I think that looks better. Yeah, so that's how you get it to, that's how you get the pins are to follow uh, the curve of any object. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.